Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So as the day went on yesterday, we did see Bitcoin and uh, other cryptocurrencies take a hit. We did see Bitcoin reach uh, about 25000 actually go above $25,000 per coin. And, uh, you know, I think that was a psychological milestone for Bitcoin uh, traders. Uh, 25000 a nice round even number, and then a sell-off occurred. So we did see this sell-off occur uh, yesterday late in the morning. And uh, Bitcoin itself did go down about 7.5%. Uh, uh, now, right now, trading about 5.7% down. So forming what is now looking like, let me just get rid of that. Forming now what is looking like this inverted bearish pennant. So uh, perhaps, you know, on the shorter term, another move to the downside. By and large, though, the rest of the crypto market is doing the same. We can see the same for uh, XRP here. XRP did top, and then uh, as Bitcoin did plummet, XRP also went down about 5.5%, right now trading about 3.68% down. XRP right now trading about 0.388, so just under 39 cents. By and large, though, you know, when we zoom out, uh, just a blip really on the radar. Just bringing up the XRP chart here on the daily. Let me remove some of this. Uh, you guys can see we haven't really seen uh, too much change in terms of this vacillating pattern. And I think, you know, we're, we're probably going to see more of the same. Compare that to Bitcoin. And I mean, Bitcoin looking a little better here, making higher highs, trying to break out of this sideways pattern. So higher highs for Bitcoin, bring up a horizontal line here, getting above this mark or at least trying to now get above this mark here, you guys can see that is where the resistance uh, rejected buyers, a sell-off occurred, and this is where it got rejected. So now trying to bust above that $25,200 mark, give or take. So I mean, ultimately, this is all par for the course. Uh, and of course, the rest of the crypto market, like XRP, is going to follow with Bitcoin. This doesn't change the fact that of the 2,000 largest whales on the Binance Smart Chain, they are still choosing XRP in their top 10 cryptocurrencies to be trading. So this from Michael Branch here. Check this out, guys. The XRP holdings represent 2% of their total cumulative holdings. XRP remains one of the favorites among investors. A recent report revealed that 2,000 of the largest whales on the Binance Smart Chain, or the BSC network, hold a massive 72.8 million XRP tokens valued at about $28.4 million. According to figures from Whale Stats, the top 2,000 BSC whales are currently holding $28.4 million worth of XRP. And this holding represents 2%. I know that number does not sound like a lot. However, this puts XRP in the top 10. Uh, actually, it looks as though it's number two here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't know why we don't have the top 10 uh, rounding off here, although it looks like the list is down here and uh, actually XRP not number two. Uh, so just to clarify that, it is closer down on the list. One, two, three, four, five, six, seventh on the list. But with the 2% holding, a lot of these are uh, stable coins as well, like uh, USDC, uh, USDZ. I've never heard of that one. USDT up here and BUSD uh, represents the largest portion, 46%. So liquidated, holding stable coins, liquidating out of a lot of their profits. And, uh, you know, it sounds like they're sitting on the sidelines holding certain cryptocurrencies, always to likely get back into the market, uh, holding stable coins to make those transactions. Anyway, XRP, guys, one of the top 10. That is definitely something to note here. Obviously, these whales know where the value lies. Uh, another one here from Michael, nearly 10,000 tokens launched on BNB and Ethereum last year were suspected to have been created just to dump on investors. So another study has been done. And, uh, you know, this just reiterates this point. The cryptocurrencies that the whales are holding, obviously now, especially in a bear market, are the ones that we should be paying attention to. Um, because if they're holding them in a bear market, I think that's a good indication that these ones are going to be the ones that have true value. However, you know, the hype of the bull market that's a different story. Cryptocurrency investors funneled as much as $4.6 billion into crypto tokens suspected to be part of a pump and dump scheme in 2022. A February 16th report from blockchain analytics firm Chainalysis uh, analyzed all tokens launched in 2022 on the Binance Smart Chain and Ethereum blockchains and found that over 9,900 bore characteristics of a pump and dump scheme. So, you know, when we go to this number up here and take a look at those uh, cryptocurrencies climbing, 22,000, over 22,000 cryptocurrencies in the market, uh, and they're looking at about 10,000 uh, of them being pump and dump schemes. And this is another reason why Brad Garlinghouse has said, you know, 99% of these coins are likely going to zero. A pump and dump scheme, it just kind of describes what that is. Uh, Chainalysis estimated investors spent $4.6 billion worth of crypto buying the nearly more than 9,900 different suspected fraudulent coins. 
Uh, and here's a quote, teams launching uh, new projects and tokens can remain anonymous, which makes it possible for serial offenders to carry out multiple pump and dump schemes. So there could be, you know, only a few perpetrators, maybe even pumping up uh, multiple coins, dozens, if not hundreds of pump and dump schemes to basically maximize their profits. So, you know, it's good that, uh, you know, these, these studies are coming out and they're identifying these coins. Of course, there will be a new crop of newbies that come up during the next bull run that will not know this information, but always better to play it smart, always better to hold the coins that do solve problems and, uh, you know, the coins that will ultimately bring value down the road. Like XRP, speaking of which, Ripple partner Airwallex expands their global leadership team. So they just announced senior appointments to their global leadership team as the global payments and financial uh, platform focuses on its expansion in 2023. Justin Yek had commenced in the newly created role of head of strategic finance and corporate development following more than 10 years in banking, finance and startups, including work for Morgan Stanley and Citi. Uh, John Stana has joined Airwallex as global head of marketing after working at Stripe in senior marketing roles, as well as positions at Google and Nike. So Airwallex really stacking their team. Uh, both positions on uh, sit on Airwallex's global leadership board, reporting to CEO and founder Jack Zhang. And so ultimately, though, this Ripple company, Airwallex, has big ambitions for 2023. And while many other companies are having to cut back on staff, we're investing in our growth and talent, said Mr. Zhang. Uh, Airwallex wants to help businesses grow. And to do so, we're supercharging our own workforce. Makes sense for a company that has, uh, you know, already been hitting it out of the park, uh, namely Airwallex in this case. A Ripple-enabled company obviously adopting a better mousetrap for cross-border transactions. RippleNet, the XRP ledger, it's been a few years now that they've adopted this solution. So uh, I'm guessing now they're obviously seeing the benefits. They realize they do not have to slow down, although other companies are. And so they are just doubling down, adding to their staff, which definitely makes sense. More revenue in the future. And that will essentially create more demand for XRP moving down the road. So great news there coming from Airwallex. Uh, I also happen to see this from the Wrath of Kahneman. This is another article with regards to Ripple partner EasyPay and how they're joining MSF Africa to support remittances across the continent. So recently we just heard about that Ripple partnership with MFS Africa. Well, African digital provider EasyPay, uh, they have a presence in 14 African countries. They just partnered with the largest mobile money hub on the continent, which does now run on Ripple's ODL service, connecting over 400 million mobile wallets and over 200 million bank accounts across Africa to enable the interoperability of cross-continent remittances. Moving cross-continent, you know, uh, expanding, looking at a broader outlook, uh, focusing on not just Africa now, but overseas. With EasyPay and MFS Africa joining hands to solve cross-continent remittances to Africa from Asia, Europe, uh, the UK, and the USA. Remittances for goods and services, school fees, medical transfers, business transfers, family maintenance allowances, and P2P transfers will be enabled. I firmly believe that the MSF or MFS, it's, it's a lot easier to say MSF, but it's MFS Africa partnership. Our customers will have instant remittances to bank accounts and wallets across Africa for our ever-growing customer base. This coming from the CEO of EasyPay. Obviously, they see the benefit of this. Now that MFS Africa is running on RippleNet, utilizing ODL, I think the partnerships there are only going to grow. These African companies are uh, realizing, hey, look, a better mousetrap. Let's partner with this company. Let's run on RippleNet. Obviously, this has uh, streamlined their cross-border services. Both companies are determined to bring last mile connectivity for remittances and collections to and from mobile wallets and bank accounts, providing more possibilities, connections, and interoperability for individuals and businesses. So an emerging payment ecosystem, technology forward, seeing the benefits of this and, uh, you know, tapping into almost a brand new market here. Africa has, uh, you know, traditionally been left behind uh, in terms of tech, in terms of, uh, you know, new progress, uh, just generally, not even just with cross-border remittances, but, you know, in general too. So when we see this kind of thing, it's almost like a new frontier for payments, a brand new market and easy pay looking to capitalize on that. So uh, interesting news here coming from both Ripple Partners, MFS Africa, and now Easy Pay joining the Ripple Alliance for Payments. Wanted to thank the Wrath of Condiment for posting that. Ripple has also unveiled their third wave of winners for their $250 million creator fund. Yeah, there was an announcement yesterday. Winners of the latest wave of Ripple's creator fund are dedicated to blending digital and physical experiences with real world utility. The wave three winners include Hot Import Nights, a project that sells NFT based tickets to virtual events, uh, Adrian uh, Balastigui. Uh, a digital canvas artist, and Emporio Records, an independent record label leveraging NFTs, 
Uh, other projects selected to join the funds, Third Wave, are digital artists. And then uh, there's a few others here commenting on the development. The founder of Trom Amnesia said, uh, the arrival of NFTs is a total game changer for creators. The speed of transfer, carbon neutrality, and simplicity of the XRP ledger are major pluses. So, you know, these NFT creators, they're realizing, okay, we need a plot. Now, not only are we creating the NFT, but we also need the platform to deliver that NFT and we're finding the XRPL superior. As an artist, he goes on to say, I'm very happy to participate in the development of this use case at scale. So developers, we're seeing them embrace the XRP ledger. This is obviously, uh, you know, the, the Ripple X foundation mandate. Get as many people on the XRPL as possible. Create as much as possible on the XRPL. Create more use cases for the XRPL NFTs has been a, you know, a hot topic since about 2021. And we've only started to see more development of NFT related projects on the XRP ledger. But it is good. They're funding it. They're supporting it. Uh, down here, it says it is noteworthy that the $250 million creator fund is an initiative dedicated to supporting the development of NFT specific related projects. So it's funny because Ripple X, you know, they support a lot. Uh, I don't think, is this through Ripple X? I'm not sure if it is or not. Uh, but they support a lot of uh, different development. This is one that is specific to NFTs alone. And they're dedicating $250 million to that alone. So that speaks volumes to me. According to Ripple, the funds provide financial and technology support to help NFT creators launch projects on the XRP ledger. So Ripple's got skin in the game, obviously fostering more development on the XRPL. This just helps the whole ecosystem, which will eventually put more demand on the XRP cryptocurrency. So another piece of great news here. Wanted to thank Michael for posting that. And the latest, guys, the latest SEC casualty is Terra Luna and Do Quan. Now, I know we probably aren't too sympathetic to this one. Uh, it's interesting, though, to see how the SEC is maybe grown up's not really the right word, but uh, how they're maybe learning from their mistakes. I haven't had the time to read the SEC's complaint, but if this is true and the SEC claims a stable coin is a security that's coming from John Deaton, by the way, it can be exchanged or converted into a security. It is one more example of the SEC making crap up as they go. Now he's retweeting out Mike Selig's tweet here. Uh, the SEC complaint against TFL and Do Kwan alleges that Luna and UST are securities. In a novel theory, the SEC only characterizes UST as an investment contract, but as a security because it could be exchanged for a security or Luna. Under this theory, though, nearly anything can be a security. Maybe they are making stuff up as they go along, but, uh, you know, at least they are being uh, a little more careful about who they're going after and why they're going after them. So we allege that Terraform and Doquan failed to provide uh, the public with full, fair, and truthful disclosure as required for a host of crypto asset securities, said SEC Chair Gary Gensler. Uh, the SEC has filed a lawsuit against Terraform Labs and its founder, Do Kwan, for allegedly orchestrating a multi-billion dollar crypto asset securities fraud, which we all know about. Uh, and here is the tweet directly from the SEC. With the press release, uh, SEC, whoops, uh, SEC charges Terraform and CEO Do Kwan with defrauding investors in crypto schemes. So that, guys, was just uh, announced yesterday, February the 16th. Uh, the SEC today has charged Singapore-based Terraform Labs PTE Limited and Do Kwan with orchestrating a multi-billion dollar crypto asset securities fraud involving an algorithmic stablecoin and other crypto asset securities. So I'm wondering how they're going to classify this uh, algorithmic stablecoin and if it's going to be um, any different than, you know, maybe some of the other stable coins that exist. The SEC also took issue with the M assets. So they're learning to kind of laser focus in on other, uh, aspects of this, I think, uh, to really kind of maybe strengthen their case moving forward. Crypto derivatives that mirror the stock price of publicly listed companies and Terraform's issuance of mirror, uh, a governance token for the mirror protocol that lists M assets. SEC chair Gary Gensler said in a statement that Quan and Terraform failed to provide the public with full, fair, and truthful disclosure. And here's the quote here with regards to that. We also allege that they committed fraud by repeating false and misleading statements to build trust before causing devastating losses for investors. Now, I mean, I can get behind this SEC lawsuit. I really can. Um, you know, it, it doesn't make sense. that John Deaton's got a point, though. It doesn't make sense. What are they going after here? How are they trying? Are they, are they learning something? Are they going to find some kind of way to differentiate uh, this particular cryptocurrency case versus others like Ripple. I mean, the, the XRP one, very clear cut. And uh, I mean, there's many, many, many reasons why XRP should not be deemed a security. Uh, moving along here. Uh, so this is the Mike Selig tweet. 
But just to kind of put an exclamation mark on this point, the one here on Twitter also posted this. Many would label this article as FUD. Okay, so this uh, also going along the lines of the SEC's crackdown, and this came out from the Wall Street Journal just yesterday. Banks are breaking up with crypto during the regulatory crackdown. So the related outcome of the crackdown is that now banks are second guessing their relationships with crypto companies. And I think ultimately this is what the SEC wanted. And so the one here on Twitter, though, noticing something, asking an interesting question. Many would label this article as FUD. What I see it as is BRICS nations were redeeming their UST bonds or debt then monetized by the Fed during the lockdown, so 2020 to 2021, the crypto market was pumping and used to destroy much of it. Operation complete. So he's saying, did they allow the crypto market to rally in 2020 and 2021 so that uh, this exact thing could happen and then decide, okay, now that it's done, now we're going to close it up. Now we're going to start regulating the heck out of it. And the small players are going to be left holding the bag because he also posted this. Okay. In 2020, the office of the controller of the currency said it would allow banks to hold cryptocurrencies for customers. So why the change of heart? Things that make you go, hmm. Now banks are deciding to break up with cryptocurrencies. And guys, I have the uh, the article up here. I will link it in the description. Uh, not going to really go over it in depth, but uh, I think you guys will probably get the point here. An interesting thought considering now, uh, you know, what we're seeing with the SEC and their total crackdown of cryptocurrencies. JV here also had an interesting point. So wrapped tokens are the receipt of the security, he claims. Got me thinking about WFLR and FLR now, uh, Hugo Fillion, uh, Community Flare, Flare Networks. Uh, so he's tagging Flare in this. How do you all feel about the SEC's recent filing describing these assets? Any concerns for the Flare blockchain? So in the Terra Luna lawsuit, here's what they are defining. Okay, the definition of a security under the Securities Act include a receipt for a security as described above when an investor bridges Luna to obtain W Luna or wrapped Luna. The owner of the wrapped Luna has the right and the ability at any time to exchange the wrapped Luna for Luna, which is offered and sold as a security. This mechanism created a pool of Luna on the Terraform blockchain through which W Luna owners could convert their holdings back to Luna. As a result, uh, wrapped Luna is also a security because it is a receipt for a security. So that does uh, you know, get us wondering about Flare 2 and wrapped Flare. How is this all going to relate? Are we holding unregistered securities right? Considering they airdropped Flare to XRP holders, is it uh, different because they airdropped it to us and we did not buy it? So, uh, you know, many questions surrounding all these aspects of the case. So uh, some interesting insight there from JV. Wanted to thank him for posting that uh, and the one also uh, for posting this. Mr. Hubert here also bringing up an interesting point. According to the SEC, what Ripple and XRP holders did is seven times as bad as what Terra and Quan has done. Now that doesn't make sense, does it? With Luna, the SEC wants to punish only the defendants. So guys, note this, okay, uh, from the Luna claim uh, right over here. Permanently restraining and adjoining defendants from violating securities laws uh, and permanently enjoining Do Kwan from violating the Exchange Act. That is from uh, the current Luna case that we're hearing here. With Ripple, the SEC wants to punish the defendants, employees, agents, lawyers, and all the people who have anything to do with them. So note this from the Ripple SEC case, permanently enjoining defendants and each of their respective agents, servants, employees, attorneys, and other persons in active concert or participation with any of them. Really going hard. Maybe they have learned their lesson though, uh, and maybe they are reining it back. I don't really know. Down here, Mr. Hubert also bringing up some facts here with regards to both cases. Terra Labs, fraud and misrepresentation, only 190 causes of action. With Ripple, no fraud and misrepresentation, but they have 404 causes of action. It could have been that, uh, you know, maybe at that time they realized they really had to go hard on Ripple because they did not have a strong case and it was like throwing darts at a dartboard. Maybe if we try hard enough, we will hit a bullseye at some point. Now they're realizing, you know, maybe we should take a more nuanced approach. I don't know. I'm not putting together these cases. However, it is really interesting to note the differences here. I think their scatter approach is really more of what is of concern to the crypto industry, pretty much trying to decimate this thing so that retail has a very hard time during the next crypto bull run. And I think this Wall Street Journal article just demonstrates that very, very clearly. Anyway, uh, some more interesting insight there. Not to mention that there was this, guys. Do you remember this from Jay Clayton? I know I've talked about this on this channel in the past. Before Jay Clayton left, yeah, he was the guy who brought upon the XRP Ripple lawsuit. But he was also the guy that mentioned this before that, okay? Cryptocurrencies in the light 
of the extremely complex nature and legal analysis regarding cryptocurrencies to determine which ones are securities and which ones are not. Baylord has decided to allow investments in three cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and you guessed it, XRP, that are generally accepted to be currencies and not currently subject to regulation by the SEC. Again, this was decided by Jay Clayton. These three cryptocurrencies are treated as non-covered securities. Outside of these cryptocurrencies, though, investment in any other uh, cryptocurrencies is prohibited. Please note the following. You may not use the three allowed cryptocurrencies to invest in other cryptocurrencies. So it looks as though even Jay Clayton didn't get the memo. Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP were deemed as safe by the SEC at that time. That was taken directly from their website, sec.gov. So are you surprised, guys? Are you really surprised? We are holding one of the most valuable cryptocurrencies, I think, one of the most valuable of our time. We know it's going to be utilized for real-world banking solutions. We know Ripple's already partnered with many central banks, specifically the Bank of England, which brings me to this, guys, from Real XRP Boy here, tweeting out this presentation here. This is uh, the Bank of England's Sir John Cunliffe, and he just gave a speech the other week. I'm going to play you guys uh, just a little bit of that. Listen to this. Emerson said, if you build a better mousetrap, the world will be to pass to your door. But it really does have to be a better mousetrap. You have to be offering something um, that isn't there in terms of efficiency, functionality. It can't just be uh, that it appears to be a better mousetrap because it operates to different rules to the other mousetraps uh, that are operating uh, in, uh, uh, in the economy. And we have a, another mantra, same risk, same regulatory outcome, which I think is a, is a really good guide. The clip goes on for another 30 seconds, but ultimately the big point here, you've got to build a better mousetrap. It's almost like he's saying Swift GPI, not going to cut it for the new financial reset. And if you have technology like RippleNet and a class A digital asset that serves as that liquidity provider, namely XRP, you are going to be at the cutting edge of financial technology moving into the near future. That's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.